King's late. King is definitely late. My apologies. But I'm here now. Let me know if you can hear me. Yeah, apologies everyone. Um, the scrambling to try and get everything done. Haven't been able to soothe you with some nice tunes on the entry either because I thought it was probably more important that I actually started the live stream than <laughs> gave you guys tunage. So welcome, welcome, welcome everybody who is online. Let me know that you can hear me okay, that everything's loud and clear, that you're here and you're not too upset that I was three minutes late to begin this live stream. Brilliant. People are here. Yo, sir, new subscriber. Love your content. Thank you very much, DPS Lee. Appreciate you. John Nix. Finally caught each other live. Retain the ascension. Usual suspect. Very nice to have you here. Talia, as always, thank you for the support and for being early. I noticed you commenting early. <laughs> and I was too much in a panic to get myself on to actually reply to anybody hello everyone yes we're all here fantastic okay this is good we are good Zayovan I'm not sure if that's how you say your name well welcome brother appreciate your constant presence presence on my live streams Andy A the same Petrina thank you everyone Rochelle if you're my Thank you, everyone, and Charmin Aquarius. See you there as well. All right, let's get let's get cracking then. So, yeah, what can I say? I was in Paris last week, as you can see, um, and this will be our third third time we've done this kind of live stream. If you've been on any of my live streams before, so before I think I did the uh, British Museum, and then I think I did the Berlin Museum. And this one is the Louvre. And actually I'll be doing hopefully two more in the next couple of weeks, which will be the Bowers Museum and the Petrie Museum, in the, which are both in the UK. But yeah, if you've been on one of these live streams before, um, these ones are pretty, they're pretty straightforward and laid back. I'll just kind of take you through the artifacts and I'll kind of just talk you through the ones that struck me. Um, that's it really I'm, I'm not going to um <laughs> to be honest with you you know there's not a huge amount more to be said i think this is one of those kind of like let's look and see what's there and i'll tell you one thing just to kind of preface the uh, um the um louvre the louvre is absolutely humongous i don't know if if you've been there let me know in the chat give me a little shout if you've been to paris and you've been to the louvre louvre is a massive museum it's the biggest it's bigger than the Neues, from what I can see, and bigger even than the British Museum. It is an absolute gigantic museum. And I guess it's one of the, to me, in my view, it's one of the, the, the three horsemen of museum, of museum agenda um, curation, I will say, dubious curation cu dubious curation and artifact fakery yeah because there's there's a lot of it going on in the louvre clear agenda in terms of the way that they they put pieces together but there's also some really really good um stuff in the louvre that you just have to see um i saw artifacts there whilst i was there that um a i didn't know were there um, pretty much same kind of surprise I had when I hit the Berlin Museum. Ones that you've seen online, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm seeing this in real life. And others that I'd never come across before that really plugged some gaps for me. So yeah, feeling quite quite grateful actually that I had the opportunity to go. Um, really, you know, if you do live in this part of the world, you are quite fortunate in that you're surrounded by some really good museums. Um, and they're all just a very short plane, boat or train drive away. So yeah, there you go. 
is Paris over the bed bug infestation? If I knew that Paris had a bed bug infestation, I wouldn't have gone. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for letting me know. I don't know. I didn't, we'll put it this way. I didn't wake up itching. So maybe, maybe it's over the bed bug infestation. Um, fun fact. Um, once again, I need to live, visit the Louvre one day. Fun fact that Mona Lisa was stolen in 1911. Very interesting. I was I was actually watching a documentary on the Mona Lisa recently. Um, it was really, really interesting. Um, because apparently there's like two Mona Lisas. There's another one, which is, I actually think, better than the original. Um, and the reason the documentary struck me, struck me so much is because um, I may or may not have mentioned, but I'm doing a larger piece of work slash investigation around... Nefertiti's various um, visages, statues, portraits, etc. And I really want to do a kind of a definitive piece of work about A, what Nefertiti really looked like and B, where her image has been, you know, propped up and worshipped and whether or not we know, you know, we know there is, but whether or not there's been any fakery and agenda in making a fake face for Nefertiti so I'm doing a larger bit of work at the moment so obviously any any other kind of any inspiration I can get towards that is always oh what happened there that was bizarre why hmm okay lost my lost my C drive <laughs> why did it do that that's really peculiar. Sorry, one second. Let's see why I did that. No idea. Let's get that back up again. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that was weird. Um, yeah, so any bits of inspiration I can get that can help me and obviously provide information towards making this investigative piece a good one is, yeah, very welcome. Very, very welcome. I've got all these large kind of pieces that I want to do, these large investigations and documentaries and kind of papers that I really want to get into. So this year is going to be that. And, and you've probably noted that I'm a little bit slow with the content and that's because of that. There's a lot more investigation going into my work at the moment. So I think the last long video I released was the one about the color blue. And I know sometimes these videos probably seem really like just kind of like, you know, you could throw them out quickly, but some of them take really, <laughs> a really long time to do the research. So that's why I'm a little bit slower at the moment with content, just bear with me. And obviously keep being a fantastic community that you are. Um, and yeah, we'll keep breaking new ground. But anyway, enough of me rambling on. Let's get into this, because um, I, yeah, I saw some really cool stuff and I want to share it with everyone. Um, and yeah, I think we're just gonna get through it. I'm, I haven't got a particular kind of like, I haven't broken this down into a particular order. I haven't done much kind of pre-prep. I'm just gonna take you through the images as I saw them. And some of the stuff is gonna really surprise you, um, shock you. Some of the stuff you're just gonna shake your head. Other stuff you're gonna be like, wow, that's pretty amazing. So yeah, I hope you're as into this as I was when I saw one thing I wish I did. I wish I, I, I went to the Louvre for one day and one day simply wasn't enough. I'll tell you that for free. If you're planning to stay or visit the Louvre, give yourself a, a minimum of two days to visit the Louvre. Absolutely a minimum of two days. Ideal situation, I'd say for three days, but two days, you should be able to get what you need. But one day certainly isn't enough. So this was me cramming. Yeah, this is me cramming. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just gonna find the folder and then I'm gonna get going from image number one. I've had the folders open already because I've got it on the screen. Okay. Let's start from the tippity top. All right. Let's get this on the screen, full screen. And bang, here we go. Okay. So this is really, yeah, you can see this is wonderful 
um, I want to say Sphinx, but you know, I'm not sure what the, I don't, I'm not sure what we called it. Does anyone know what the native name, obviously I know people will say Heru Emaket or Hor Emaket, but what's, didn't, does anyone know the native name of this actual kind of figure, this, you know, pharaoh headed cat? Is it, I'm sure Sphinx is not a native name, but we know, it's good to know the native name. Um, yeah. So anyway, this one was a really wonderful piece. What well, obviously you guys can see how absolutely deliberate the erasure of this one's nose was. That is just like a a very <laughs> concise chisel mark there. Yeah. So that was quite sad to see this image because you can just I mean you can just look at the face of this great African ruler here and wonder what he looked like with his nose preserved. But yeah. What a wonderful piece regardless. Look at that. Pin sharp image as well. I've got a new camera, so you guys are gonna enjoy that. Um yeah. So there, I've raised the camera there and got a nice close up of this image. I can't remember who it's of. Looking at it face on it looks a no. I was gonna say it looks Time no, it doesn't really. I was gonna say it looks a tiny bit like I'm in Hotep, I can't remember who it was. Let's see who it is. It's uh oh it's a Tanite. So it says Oh, some of these are in French and I haven't run the translation yet. I should have done that before I came in. This Amanem had the first. Amanem had the first. This is Middle Kingdom, twelfth dynasty. Why does it say Men Reptile, nineteenth dynasty? Shashonk. Okay, maybe it's not. It's got all these rulers listed after. I'm not sure what it means. Maybe they all put their name on it. So maybe it was first Eminem had the first and they all added their name to it. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Yeah, I wish I'd done the translations now. <laughs> oh man. Um, let's have a look at this one. Tomb of the Swing. Oh yeah, this one's gonna blow your mind. So I took all of these images because these are the descriptions, okay? So Tomb of the Swing, these elements from a frieze once decorated the facade of a tomb in the necropolis of Kyrene or Cyrene. Um, the painted subjects are linked to the world of the dead and that of women. Now, guys, I want you to bear in that, please remember, digest this last sentence, yeah? The painted subjects are still linked to the world of the dead and that of women. Now, there's a reason why they said that these images are paint, are linked to the world of the dead. Okay, and you've got to see that in a moment. Okay. So these are the images. So these are from Cyrene, by the way, guys, or Kyrene, as I mentioned earlier, the necropolis is of Kyrene. Okay. And these are the images we're going to look at. So Morna and the deceased tutor and student, mistress and servant, young woman on the swing, deaf and appropriate, deaf and apparition, and Sharon and deceased. Let's have a look at these images. These ones hit me straight away. <laughs> look, look at these images. Cyrene, yeah. You couldn't get more deliberately painted, melanated, deeply melanated people if you tried. So what was the coping mechanism upon finding images like this? Say, oh, well, you know, it's all linked to the fact that, they, you know, this was, the, the color was symbolic of them being deceased. That's the excuse that's being made here. All of them, I like this, by the way. The color's got nothing to do with them being deceased. These are black people, yeah? I think we can all agree that these are definitely depictions of black people. Look at that one. Literally dark brown, okay? And you know, you can't make excuses about it being the darkening because <laughs> why is it darkened selectively? You know, the red robe, the white robe, everything else is preserved perfectly. So there's no way on earth this could be anything but the deliberate painting of what these people look like. No way on earth. There's no darkening that will be that selective. And someone noted the red hair. Absolutely. This was a common thing in Europe. Apparently, amongst the black Europeans, there were many people who were described as being deeply swarthy or black. 
very black with right with bright red hair, which is interesting. How these two women on a swing. Remember, I look the colour of the hair hasn't changed the texture. Look at the texture of the hair, it's absolutely African. Okay. So these are black women in Cyrene. There's a few of these. Really wonderful images. And there you go. For other people saying that the skin color or the skin tone isn't deliberate, we'll have a look at this person here who's depicted with red skin or reddish pinkish skin. Okay. As contrast. So there's an absolute deliberacy here. All of the black people have Afro hair regardless of what colour it is, they all have Afro type hair. Okay, and they're perfectly capable of painting people who are of a different hue or melanation if they wanted to. And Kumar Alice says, as in Simon, um, Simone or Simon of Cyrene, I think that's a biblical character and yes, I think it's the same place. So we're talking about the Mediterranean region here and here's one I think dated around the same time and you can see these people aren't as dark so it's a good comparison and if I go back someone did ask what the date was I'm just going to quickly scroll back to see if it said the date on any of those plaques oh there we go so I think the date is there no is that it 220 to 180 a V A D that might be maybe that sounds about right okay so Cyrene is ah oh, is it Libya I wish I could read French but it looks like it says Necropolis of Cyrene so maybe someone could check that out for me I can't I can't I can't do it right now what's Cyrene in Libya if it was in Libya then it probably makes it even obviously slightly less surprising that these people are black <laughs> um, but yeah. Let's move on. Stelle and Loculus, or Loculus, funeral slabs from necropolises of Alexandria, Egypt. So here we have a very tall, very African looking man in a short. I don't know how you'd describe this man here. I mean, this looks like a giant and a it's either a pygmy and a normal person or a giant and a normal person. <laughs> One or the other. Quite a striking image there. Seated woman, standing young boy and standing woman. Okay, so that's that was the one before, I think. No, I didn't get that one. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to move on to some um, images of yeah statues and artworks now so this one this is where we're going to start getting into some of the um dubious curation that i spoke about earlier you know the habit the habitual need to call every single black person a prisoner or a slave in antiquity which i found quite you know i found quite bizarre this image I found quite, I, I, I mean, straight away I was like, okay, you know, if you want to call this person a prisoner, they got their hands behind their back, it's possible. So, and then you have this image here of two men wrestling. Now one looks, you know, I would say veritably mixed of phenotype and then the other one down here looks very much of a more African facial type. But it's two men wrestling. Um, Really nice statue, actually. Really very nice statue. And then this image here. And this is where we'll get into the descriptions of these images, okay? So this image here, this guy sitting and looks like some kind of a, a stall or something that he's holding on to. Obviously, someone of African phenotype. So let's have a look at the description. So this one sculpted lamp and this is where you'll start to get <laughs> black slave crouching before a lamp surmounted by a cockerel now once again 
there's nothing that suggests this guy is a slave. <laughs> I don't see anything. There's no inscription suggesting he's a slave. He could be described as many things. He could be an entertainer, he could be a merchant, he could just be a young black boy <laughs> or something. We don't know, but you better believe in the Louvre, whenever they see black, they're gonna put the word slave. It literally goes hand in hand, okay? Um, so yeah, there's that one. There's also the one with the guy, so let's have a look here. Black adolescent hands tied behind his back. Once again, implications being a slave. Now I said that this could have his hands tied behind his back, but I found it interesting enough. I couldn't get it back, couldn't show you an image from behind it because I had glass all around and it blocked you from actually being able to see anything, to get a camera around the sides. But I looked behind the backs and his hands aren't actually tied. They're just behind his back. And then there was like some, there was like some wound up um, metal banding that they had put behind, but it was also being used to prop him up straight. So it's obviously something that had been added. It wasn't a part of the original statue. So I just once again wondered and I quipped why they would say that his hands were tied. I mean, this, if you want to say he's a slave, you're doing it anyway, say it. Why embellish the facts? You know, he, his hands weren't tied behind the back, they're just behind his back because in essence, he could be a dancer. <laughs> you know, he could be doing other things, which I found quite interesting, you know? Um, but yeah. And the only one that was, they they resisted in mentioning slave. There's just a group of wrestlers, so they didn't say you know one one man you know man handling this slave, which was nice to see <laughs> on that occasion. But yeah, there you go. Let's move on. Um, I mean, Suntas Flo said he's just posing elegantly, and I you know I kind of second that. I kind of second that. I mean, just quickly going back to that. It doesn't look, you know, he's got a smile on his face. Nothing about this is contiguous with slavery. And, and once again, because I said his hands weren't bound, to me it leans towards this just being a pose. But look, I'm not going to, I, I, I could be wrong. So I'm just saying what it looks like to me. He could, he could very well, this could have been a depiction of a slave. It's, it's, it's not a big deal, even if it was. But I'm just saying that they should be curating and, reporting on these things correctly. Um, let's have a look. So we've got this image here, faces all erased, but I just, it, it struck me as being quite a, a nice piece that I wanted to capture. Um, I look for just anything in terms of recognizability. It was pointed out to me that this woman kind of ba balancing the food, carrying on her head, and uh, you can just about make out these locks, so it gave me kind of Etruscan vibes, where you know we got clearly got a woman with dreadlocks doing something that was is very normal of African women to do, and that's not to suggest that she absolutely is African. You can also see some hair here that looks, you know, relatively locally textured. I'm not saying that these absolutely are, but it's definitely a few things that rang out to me that made me capture this image anyway. So that's described as two tier motif relief, scene of worship to Kibel, Sibyl, Kibel or Sibyl. The lower register features a scene of worship to a sacred tree of Sibyl or Kibel. The engraved inscription reads under the Hipparchy at Bulides, son of Metrodoros, it goes on to say that Set <laughs> Soterides, a priest of Kibel, thanks the goddess who appeared to him in a dream to reassure him of the fate of his friend Marcus. And it goes on. Let's move on. Fragment of okay, that's the same one. I got another picture of the of the slab there. I took pictures of the French as well, which you'll see. It's not all, not everything's in English. The French are very um, <laughs> they don't like having things translated to English. So, I was going to do a kind of live translation on my phone, um, and my um my little chat G chat GPT image translation assistant wasn't working as well. 
on these images as I hoped so that was a bit of a disappointment um, at some point I'll get these translated uh, let's move on to the next one so this one camel with a strange kind of creature on its back let's have a look quickly what does it say um, Psyche goddess of the soul on the camel and I'm not familiar with Psyche I'll be totally honest with you it's the first time I've seen this deity or being interesting if anyone's familiar feel free to post something and yes this is where we start to get into some of the more traditional statues and this is gonna yeah stay tuned because this is really gonna interest you okay um one of the things that you'll um see take place and i'm going to pause and show you when we get examples of this is with the reshaping and you're going to be surprised and shocked at how much of what on display has been tampered with openly tampered with and then they admit to tampering with um so yeah just prepare for that <laughs> We're gonna come on to it soon, so let's have a look here. So that was what we were just, what I was just showing you there is a portrait of, I wasn't sure, cause these two plaques were next to each other and wasn't made it, didn't make it clear about which one was which. But it's this portrait of Mephrades, the sixth Eupater of noble birth, king of Pontos, the Black Sea. And then we had presumed portraits of An Antiochus the third, king of Syria from 223 to 187 BC. So I'm gonna to lean towards it being this one because there's nothing about this statue that we just looked at that triggers Syria to me. I'd probably more lean towards Black Sea region than Syria. So that's probably a, a portrait of Mephrades or whatever. Now, came across these three, I'm not sure what to call them. They're not coins because they were kind of like made out of clay and these to me were very you know they looked quite regional I'm going to say somewhere between somewhere between Africa and Greece phenotypically um, the only thing that makes me lean um, towards these being put pictures of more mixed people as opposed to black people is definitely the hair normally quite good at recording that texture now in saying that obviously you do get this is the common hair phenotype that you get across a lot of um the Nile region as well where you can you get that loose wavy hair which is quite common so there is that possibility but um yeah i caught i captured these three coins because they were clearly people who had some kind of ancestry there and then you had this image which was the head was completely broken off it which is really sad but it was quite a lovely image of a woman and I think this is something about let's have a look here I'm just gonna read it it's quite a sad plaque it said yeah funerary Stella a young woman who died in childbirth mother of twins deceased to the left probably a young mother who died in childbirth holds a swaddled infant in her arms before her a small servant holds a second infant a twin now I don't know why they've interpreted this person as a ser servant. That one looks like one of her children, you know? <laughs> and they look phenotypically identical, this person and this person. So I don't know why they've interpreted that to be a servant, but um, yeah. Like I said, you get some bizarre, <laughs> bizarre um, descriptions on the um, plaques when you're in the Louvre Museum, certainly. Um, let's move on. I just captured these heads because I just found them quite interesting. Don't really have much to add here, so I'm gonna skip on. And this is uh, one of your kind of typical Greek vases. Now, actually, one of the reasons I captured this vase as well is because you can, it's important to note the deliberacy, okay? When they're choosing to use the light as the base color as opposed to the dark as the base color. Because a lot of, oftentimes in the, when it comes to Greek, um, 
minnowing um kind of like pottery work they deny when they show the gods who normally are painted black have painted black skin they say oh well it's just how they showed characters so one of the reasons i wanted to capture this vase was to show actually no when they want to capture characters and they want to show you know a contrast lighter skin to darker hair they will absolutely do that but when they want to show people who had dark skin they will use that same black they use for the hair for the skin and they tend to do that with all of their deities um, and some of the people so it's really important that, that kind of difference is noted it, it wasn't some kind of an a limitation that they were being faced with by the kind of medium that they had it was a choice to do them in dark skin when when that was the case so it's really important to note that okay um so let's see it says vase for storing liquid the trojan prince paris with aphrodite helen or eros i think that's what the image was that i just showed you here sounds about right now this is a video that i captured um and the reason i captured this video because i just wanted you guys to see how i mean this the louvre is just no expense spared in terms of sometimes you're <laughs> you're kind of pinching yourself that you're in a real building i mean just look at this this is the the ceiling of the room that i was in and bear in mind when we're talking about the loo, we, you, you could it take it take you a good 15 20 minutes to walk around the entire courtyard it's really large and every square foot of it has this kind of amazing <laughs> amazing artistry and kind of it's just it's mind-blowing it's mind-blowing so all of this would have i'd imagine been built at the height of you know colonialism and in that period when they're deciding to kind of collect all of this amazing stuff but i mean what a building <laughs> it's just it's literally mind-blowing to see so i'm just gonna look quickly let the video play so you can see what the building looks like if that doesn't blow your mind i don't know what what does <laughs> I was gonna pause it there. Big painting in the middle. And look at it gold. <laughs> Seriously, no expense spared. Amazing, amazing building. Let's move on. So if you um have a look at this image over here and what strikes you about this image or what should strike you about this image and some of you might take a while to get this because i it took me i was like something didn't sit right with this image okay um i know i shouldn't actually dwell on this image too long because i'll probably get reported for the nudity <laughs> but I was looking at this image and I was like, those body proportions don't match the head. That straight away was the first thing that hit me. I was like, the body proportions don't match the head. If you look at the body proportions, we've got really long arms here, yeah? And one of the easiest ways to note the arms, when I say long arms, I always think about the arms in proportion to the length of the torso, okay? So when you have arms, this part of the arm, not the forearm, I'm not sure what you call this part of the arm, but this part of the arm from the shoulder to the elbow, and that essentially comes down to the waist, that's very much kind of like leaning towards being a more African trait, okay? Um, because proportionally we have shorter torsos um, and longer arms, broader shoulders, so overall arm span in proportion to our height tends to be quite a bit longer um, than our European counterparts. And that's not a 
you know, this isn't phrenology and it's not supposed to scare people. I know people are like, oh, we're all the same. And, you know, unless you, you know, until we bleed, you know, we've all got red blood. I, I get all that. But there are physical differences between ethnicities. We, we can all agree that. Okay. And it's just the fact that a majority, a great majority of melanated people have these features. Now we have them in differing proportions. If you go to the Nile region and East Africa, you get the really extreme kind of long, short torsos, really long arms, really long tibias. And if you have the, if you look more towards the kind of like Central Africa, you have really long arms, but just not quite at the same length as you get in across like the East African, particularly among, amongst like the Tutsi tribe and the Maasai um, of the kind of like deeper Nile region. So around the Great Lakes regions, that's where you get the, you know, the absolute extreme of this kind of like expression of physical distribution. So when I looked at this, this is kind of more sitting more kind of just in your normal, normal, moderate kind of African type, but certainly quite far away from the European type. So it struck me and I was like this, why, why does, why, why is the body have these proportions, even the, the length of the tibia. So I'm gonna zoom in there just to get that thing out of the way. <laughs> even if you look at the length of the tibia, it was just a bit longer. You know, the, the finish carve muscles. I thought, hmm, okay. I didn't really put too much thought to it. It's just something that kind of like struck up to me to a degree and I was like, fine, okay. Then I read the plaque. So let's re have a read of the plaque and this will, this will get you checked this. So Octavian, the figure of Augustus, Roman Emperor, from 27 BC to AD 13. This type of nude statue, representing a famous person turned hero, in this case a general, appeared in Roman art from the first century BC. The signature of the Greek sculptor Ophelion, son of Aristonidas, appears on the back of the cuirass. The head, pay attention now, pay attention, the head, not original, dates to about 31 BC. <laughs> what do you mean the head, not original? What the heck does that mean? The head, not original. That means that they got this head from somewhere else. It represents Octavian, the future emperor Augustus who reigned. Now the head, they I think they just plucked out of some, <laughs> some river somewhere. <laughs> if I remember correctly, because this is one of the heads they used to present as one of the Caesars, okay? So Roman, it's, so they've just, they've got this body from somewhere and they've just decided, oh, well, we're gonna stick a random head on top of it. <laughs> what? Uh, this is bizarre. Why would they do that? Surely the head could have been a piece of heart in its own right. Why would they? And if you look, they've obviously done this to try and get away with it. And clearly there's been some outcry or something and a need for them to kind of like come clean. So now they're being really, you know, on a plug. Okay, we'll mention on the plug the fact that the head doesn't matter. This head did not belong in this body. That is really, really bizarre. It's very, very bizarre behavior that that was done. And to me, the body doesn't match the head, ultimately, is the point that I was making. The body doesn't match the head. Um, and maybe I'm strange, but when I see things like togas, I think of Africa. Call me strange. You know, we still wear togas in Africa. Um, I never thought it fitted the Romans. So I've always had that kind of like dubiousness when I see certain fashions um, and they don't match. So yeah, this head. God knows where it's from. I mean, they date it 31 BC. This head doesn't look like it's 31 BC to me, personally. But um, yeah, go go figure. So there you go, there's that one. And that wasn't the only one, by the way. There's another one. This one was the same. Once again, I've got the same vibes. This one, I've got slightly less vibes. But once again, i still got the similar kind of vibes where I was like, something's not matching here, proportionally. Let's read the plaque. Okay. The curious placed in support of the statue recalls that the figure depicted in heroic nudity is a war leader. Heroic nudity, by the way, I want you to mark those words and see how this language changes over the course of this live stream. The original identification of the head, I'll read that again. 
the original identification of the head as a portrait of Roman general and sports statesman Julius Caesar once rejected may well prove correct. The pose of the figure derives from an original Greek work from the 5th century BC. They are clearly telling you here this is another head replacement. So that's two head replacements. These are in the same room. <laughs> this is just... I, I found it just... I'm not going to even just say curious. I found it bizarre. And people are obviously just taken for granted that these statues were just, you know. <laughs> it's just really weird. It's just really, really, really weird. Okay. Um, looks like I don't have any. Um, just bear with me one moment. I'm going to do a little bit of a clean up in the chat. I think I need to ban some people. I don't know, restore it. Here we go. One second. Boom, boom, boom. Let's hit you with a 24 hour one. Boom. And who else? If you're in the chat using different languages, I am gonna just ban you because, yeah, I think you know what you're doing. Let's hit you with a ban as well. Go half an hour for you. Be a bit nicer to you. There we go. Okay, let's carry on. Um, without the distractions. Okay, there we go. We can get back to work now. All right, let's move on. Now, this image was actually pointed out to me and I almost walked past it first of all, because I was just like, oh, it's just you know, another European work. And then someone pointed out to me and said, don't you think that they look really Ethiopic? And after that, Okay, sorry, I only, well, you know what, Zeoven just said the, the other dude speaking Arabic was cool. I put, well, I only banned him for half an hour because I wasn't sure. I just haven't got time to be going back and forth. So he'll he'll be able to post again if he sticks around for half an hour. But I gave him no 24-hour ban. Okay, so, yeah, uh, apologies if I got it wrong. Um, if, I, if I can reverse it, I will. Um, I'll take your word for it, Zeoven. I know you're good good people so so going back to this image someone pointed out to me yeah it's very ethiopic and the hair is actually really this kind of like wavy hair sometimes we see this kind of hair and we default to go oh it's european it's european when actually it's not it's kind of like you know if you go for instance you could go to modern nubia and you'll see this type of hair all over modern nubia this is just a realistic depiction and then actually when i looked at the started looking at the faces i was like these do kind of have there's something about the form of them that does give a really kind of Ethiopic vibe. So I kind of had to agree with that. Um, look, I'm not once again, not trying to see, yeah, out and out, these people are definitely, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that sometimes we really do under, under, undermine the potentially, the kind of like the nuance and the potentiality of the way different people look and we always put people in this kind of like these huge black and white buckets when actually there's a huge range of hues that kind of lie in between and someone said yeah and you can see it in the jawline as well and I, I agree I agree there's something about it so this entire stele and they all had their noses broken on this particular one as well and you know that that to me that's <laughs> that's definitely an African to me when I see that face you know and these, even that, he, this face here, he reminds me of, um, reminds me a bit of Menelik. Is it Menelik the first, the former emperor of Ethiopia? 
he has that kind of look, you know. So, yeah, it did. It did strike me. It did strike me. I was like, yeah, there's a, there's a definitely a kind of. I would say a. Yeah, there's just something kind of like if you know the people who are kind of like the. Not even make. Not, I never said Ethiopia. It's the Ethiopic. So if you even like look at the kind of, the. Habesha types that you still get in the Middle East, they have a lot of this phenotype, particularly like this person over here. That's a really good example as well. So yeah, it did strike me quite a bit. Um, just that kind of like look. Um, thank you very much to Jonathan Waters. I've got to change the function because I did some admin in. Let me just quickly go back in. Let's give it another try. Boom. Thank you, uh, Jonathan Waters. It's still no notice. Anyway, I'm here. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I don't know why people aren't getting notices. But we're good. We've got about 260 in the live at the moment, which is good. We are moving at a rather leisurely pace today. Um, so, yeah, let's carry on anyway. So, this sarcophagus features the Greek hero Achilles Hyden among the daughters of King Lycomedes to escape the fate that awaited him at Troy. See, that will be interesting. Okay, so the Trojans, many people will say the Trojans were African. So that would then kind of like make it make some sense. But obviously this is not, this wasn't created um, contemporaneously with them. So that's certainly not the the insinuation there but it would explain why people afterwards would you know maybe lean towards presenting them in that way um i found it interesting anyway this was just another normal one but i just thought it was quite an amazing i think it's like a sarcophagus it was just yeah some of these pieces i just took pictures of because they just amazed me in terms of the artwork that was one and I did take a picture of this to say look so for instance if I saw a phenotype like these these ones I'm not disagreeing these look kind of like you know your modern more towards kind of like your modern Greek people okay so that to me this is a there's a difference in the phenotype of these people and the ones that I showed you just before these don't quite have the same facial structure okay so it's not a case of you know just pulling out any and every person that you see and saying oh they look like they've got it's actually no just more being sensitive to the fact that hey actually let me not look at this through black and white eyes what phenotype is actually being presented here you know um can i give a big thank you to spikes for the 1999 spikes 1900 great work please continue the meticulous work thank you appreciate that thank you Really do appreciate it. Um, and I will try. Let's carry on. Nah, nah, this is where we're gonna get angry, guys. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna start diving into a bit of the um yeah, a bit of the controversy now. So yeah, just uh yeah, prepare for this. So I want you to read this inscription first of all, here, okay? Black slave known as the Moor or Il Moro. Yeah. Are we all clear on that? Yeah, this is what this is being. I, I wanted to read that out just to prepare you what you're going to look at. Because if, you know, what is this black slave? Okay. Someone said nude people, nude black people, slaves, nude white people, heroes. Okay, got it. <laughs> I love that statement. It's so true. It's so true. Did you? And I said, and I actually mentioned that when I read out that image, you know, um, that plaque of the image where they cut the head off and put a new head on or whatever and it said you know victorious you know the guy's standing with his wang out and it's like oh standing in heroic victorious prose <laughs> you know he, he's heroic and victorious because even though he's naked yeah but you know he's naked and he's white hey you know he's a heroic ruler caesar now black slave known as il moro let's see what this guy looks like because clearly if he's a slave we've got, we've got to have some clear visual representation of of a slave here. 
This is this is your black slave, Il Moro. Yeah? Here's your black... Does that look like a slave to you guys? Sorry. I'm sorry. Does that look like a black slave to you guys? D d does he look like a slave to you? Does this guy who has a marble... <laughs> I want to say toga slash tunic. Clearly something representing a gold belt. And probably the most expensive looking shoes I've ever come across <laughs> in, in the history of antiquity. I ain't never seen no one rocking those shoes like this in my life. Yeah. Does this dude, this godly looking dude here look like a slave to you? This is absolute garbage that they would report that this guy is a slave. This is clearly, I would say, bare minimum a prince, probably the ruler. This is probably a, a Caesar of some sort, okay? Bare minimum, someone of very high aristocracy. If you just look at the materials that have been used for the building of this, okay? Look at the materials that have been used, people. Look at the craftsmanship behind this piece. It's unbelievable. And they're going to tell you that this dude is a slave. It's, it's just, this actually physically angered me. Okay. And this is not, the reason this angered me is this. Let me, let me show you why this angered me and why you cannot, you cannot buy into the crap that they try and feed you. Because bear in mind, this is a slave. Now I'm going to show you three more statues made out of exactly the same, well, I'll say exactly the same materials. Basically, I'm going to show you three more statues that I believe are counterfeits that are supposed to basically copy this statue because they're made of almost the same material, but I feel like they were made after the fact. This is the original and they are the counterfeits. But interestingly, they never described any of them as being slaves. Let's have a look. So we have... This one here. So this one says, Camillus, young Roman assistant, a priest during religious sacrificial ceremonies. Let's have a look at Camillus. This is Camillus. Now Camillus is actually barefooted, yeah? But Camillus can't be a slave. Camillus's gums are nowhere near <laughs> as sharp as Il Moro or the Moor who they called the Black Slave. He's got a common rope belt. Yeah, common rope belt. And he's assisting. He's even got his hand out in a position like, let me hold your sword for you, master. Yeah. <laughs> but this guy here was not described as a slave. Now to me, I'm gonna to be totally frank with you. I got counterfeit vibes of this. I felt like this was the original. This was the archetype, okay? And these three that I'm gonna show you, this is one of the three, these came afterwards. That was instantly my gut feeling. The material that was used for the black didn't shine like it did on the original. Okay, and the marble that was used was not as fine as well. This marble actually looked like it was deliberately chosen because it had these kind of things, veins running through it that give it a garment like a pill. It's really just like an amazing piece of artwork, this one. And if you look at these ones, this is kind of more just generic marble. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's just a, that's just a, that's purely subjective, by the way. Um, nothing objective about that statement but yeah it's worth just kind of like noting that okay um so yeah this is this is camillus yeah who, who's not a slave by the way not a slave let's have a look at the next one next one um oh that's camillus again camillus has had an upgrade he's got a little a little thing around the shoulders still got his hand out yeah but yeah, not a slave, still not a slave, by the way. Okay. 
And then finally we have Diana, Roman goddess of the hunt. So we have a goddess to, to top everything off. Here's Diana, Roman goddess of the hunt. Once again, utilizing the same kind of form. Okay, same kind of materials. But to me, just not the same standard. Personally, that's my opinion. I also wondered about the proportions of this one as well because the arms do look long again. So I do wonder if there's been any kind of work done or maybe a replacement of a head on this one. Maybe, maybe not. I have no idea. Pure conspiracy. But um, yeah, there you go. But you notice how only the black man was described as the slave, even though he was clearly the most regal and the most expensive. Africa for Africans. Thank you for your nine ninety nine. I really, really appreciate you. Um, so I'm just trying to scroll. And HD, appreciate you too. He said it's an international conspiracy. Unfortunately, bro, it certainly is. I mean, when it comes to when you talk about Germany, France, and the UK. You really are talking about the belly of the beast there. You'll not get three nations that put more effort and more of a joint effort into the whitewashing of history. I'm not going to mince my words, essentially. Those are the three nations. Those are like the, the kind of the three horsemen when it comes to the whitewashing of Egypt and the whitewashing of all of ancient history. They really do work in cahoots and work tirelessly at pushing these false agendas so when you look at their Meiji museums that's really where you gotta let enter ground zero and the fact that they have such a anti what I found really interesting and you gotta go through that you're, you're probably noting this already when your eyes are open to these things in spite of centuries of for want of a better word anti-blackism and um the erasure of black history they still have so many artifacts <laughs> that are clearly black people when you open your eyes and when you open when your eyes are open beyond the bs such as like il moro the black slave here and when you re when you know your history and you know what well, clearly wasn't a slave it's clearly a monarch that they're trying to hide and suppress or something like that you realize actually they <laughs> they're kind of at a shortage of real artifacts the real artifacts are the ones normally depicting like out of these four artifacts i would say il moro was the real one and these the other three personally to me look like counterfeits look like attempts to kind of duplicate the style that was used on the original that's what it looks like to me that's what my gut said instantly when i walked in the room they didn't look the same so it's kind of bizarre it's kind of like well if you're if everything you say about history is real why do you have why do you have to lie about all of the melanated artifacts and also why do you have so little to show that's not including us <laughs> that's the question yeah so there you go there he is again from the side i really wonder who it was though I want to kind of like really take a mental note of his face because I feel like one day we'll we'll know who this is and we'll be able to give his name back. I really do feel that'll be the case. I even took a close up of the feet as well to just kind of show you the difference in the level of artwork as well. So this is the one of the, I'm not going to say counterfeits, but one of the other ones I would say. I took a close up of the foot and then have a look at the feet of Il Moro here. Look at the difference in terms of just the, I don't know, it's just, it just felt like another level of artistry that was being used in his. You know, this just looked a little bit more. I mean, there's still a very good piece of art, but that's kind of GCSE versus A level, you know. <laughs> now, that's how I, I saw it anyway. There's just a different level of artistry that was used. I mean, for them to put that much effort into the depicting a slave, that was really nice of them, wasn't it? Charmin um, Aquarius said, the more and the wild men never forget. Absolutely, never forget. 
another image that I just wanted to capture for you guys to see. Just to once again, look at this. <laughs> this is insane. This really did strike me when I saw this. Absolutely insane. I mean, you have to take your hat off. They sp literally spared no expense with this building. Um, obviously, it wasn't money they earned. <laughs> we all know how France got its wealth. <laughs> so, yeah, but either way, it was just something to me, you know. So, now let's get into Egypt now, because this is where it's going to really start turning up. 300 and also online. Thank you, guys. It's a fantastic little crowd we got here. We've got over 300 people. Can I ask you all to just hit up the likes as well? Let's get some more people in and get a, get as many uh, many people following as possible. Now, this is where the BS continues, okay? We're in ancient Egypt now. And initially I walked past, there were two of these statues. And initially I just walked straight past them. So imagine this is one and there's one on one side and one on the other. And this is literally the entrance to coming into ancient Egypt. And I looked at these and I just thought, okay, Ptolemaic. Ptolemy dynasty sphinxes okay fine they're gonna put Ptolemy's at the front because they want people to as much as possible you know believe that the ancient Egyptians were of a quote unquote Caucasian phenotype I kind of used to that now they will load all the, the Ptolemaic era right at the entrance as much as possible and then you only start getting into the dynastic era when you're quite, quite deep in and people's minds have already been tainted and kind of you know yeah i get that but here's <laughs> what i wasn't ready for so i'm walking past these two statues so i'm like oh that looks weird i mean you look and see it from here i was like but why does the nose look like that so like, that nose looks a bit weird so this is just to zoom in 332 to 30 bc that's that's the ptolemaic era okay and it just says here well it's in french something granite oh maybe it was found in rome in antiquity it says something about be finding this in rome so this is it says egypt ptolemaic egypt with a question mark but these were found in rome but that's not what got my that's not what got my um attention this is let me show you what got my attention <laughs> i had to take a close-up of this this nose is absolutely fake yeah absolutely fake guys notice the face and then those these are two completely different pieces of rock same type of rock but absolutely different pieces of rock now what got me when i saw this was initially i just kind of thought oh well it's a restorationist and then i thought about it and i thought the pathology of doing something like this is really bizarre because in order to decide you're going to replace the nose they had to first of all create a and for those who don't know how this works they would have had to deliberately carve out and create some kind of a chasm yeah and then someone's had to go away find a identical or at least a similar piece of rock okay and then i mean this isn't a straight line have a look at this do you know how many hours of work they what must have been going through their mind to decide they were going to replace the nose and put a pokey European nose there because you can just see from looking at the phenotype of the face the way this nose pokes out it looks like you know that character that plays Loki in the Marvel that's not this is a really hyper European nose <laughs> they've put on here it's absolutely ridiculous and totally unnecessary so and then when you the, what that kind of like draws my attention to is the fact that Actually, when you look at this, in spite of the fact that it's relatively thin lips without the nose, once again, in my opinion, you're looking at a face that is more of a kind of Ethiopic phenotype. The nose is what throws it off and then starts to make you see something that's more European. And I didn't do just do do this just once, by the way, guys. Okay, this is on the other side. Okay, this isn't the same statue. This is left side. This is right side. This is a separate statue. They've done it twice. This is the same thing they've done here. Clearly a different piece of rock. Carved out. 
absolutely bizarre <laughs> in my opinion unnecessary and bizarre and obviously this is just to me this just undermines their entire you know everything that they do because then th that that's at the entrance imagine the entrance to the museum straight away i'm like well okay so i'm clearly entering the museum of bs here because <laughs> they're not they're not really operating from a true ground why would they do that i don't know honestly i have no idea why they do that but there you go um <laughs> just wanted to show you that so that's the first thing that i saw from ancient egypt in this museum okay so once again i took this image once again just so you guys can see the african body form because i think this is something that's very 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 much overlooked i want you to look at the length of the arms okay the elbow once again meets the waist the torso is short okay the tibia is long and the arms reach down almost to the knee when they're fully stretched out this is not peculiar this is very much an african body form most of you who are african who are on my live stream will be able to almost with just a slight very very slight tilt of your body with your arms stretched down be able to kind of like touch your knee okay this is kind of like the very much the nilotic extreme of it this is what you get around the great lakes region this is what you get from kenyan kenyan long distance runners etc etc this is where you'll get that kind of long body type. So you can see it here, okay? The arms reaching very long. And it's really good for us to understand and see that because sometimes, as a, as from what we've seen earlier in this live stream, sometimes the body plan is all we have. Yeah? Sometimes the body plan is all we have. Yeah? And that means we're going to have to find that, see that this person was an African because they've replaced the head and they haven't even told you. So you have to have that trigger on, don't you? You have to kind of have that, your senses awake. Otherwise, you, you will be missing, you will be walking past African artifacts because you don't understand what an African body plan looks like or those kind of like key triggers and this is one of the things they've been very effective at stealing African history but actually there's only so far they can go because they essentially the assumption always was when dealing with African history okay let's just replace all the faces okay that's what vandals do someone actually mentioned vandals earlier in the comments and I'm glad they did but that's what vandals do let's just recarve all of the faces but actually if we if we become proficient and experts in our anthropometric proportions our craniometric proportions our different expressions of phenotype we can actually call them to task quite effortlessly and say this body plan falls outside of your physical capability as a you know as a non-melanated european this it's impossible that this could be you we can actually do that that we actually have the capability to do that and that's where i think we're going to start finding a lot of our truth that's why i'm finding a lot of my truth actually when it comes to even these whitewashed portraits i can't wait to do another european one with you guys by the way these whitewashed portraits of african people but it's provable if we have this knowledge to hand so yeah familiarize yourself and don't don't feel ashamed for really taking in what the bodies of these people look like Suntas Flo just said when you learn to draw body anatomy you realize the differences from African body plan to European white and Asian absolutely and there is difference it's not there's and there's no kind of like there's no notions of superiority here that's not what's being presented it's just understanding different ethnic differences um and different phenotypic traits of the different groups of people there's nothing absolutely nothing wrong with that particularly when it comes to the subject of history where our history is being obfuscated and people tell us that bodies of clearly african people aren't africans So there you go and yeah very much an east african body plan there absolutely 
No, I take this image. Just I think it's is this Ramesses? No, this is Nactaniba. I can see it here. Nactaniba the seventh. The reason I took this image is actually I'm I'm going to I'm not going to go into it right now. But um, I'm going to release a video very soon talking about this depiction. And most of you will notice this is this is kind of like the depiction of when someone has a representation of Hathor. Okay, and it's we've been told this is Ra being carried between the horns of a bull. Okay, I actually have changed that belief based on some very recent research that I've done. And I actually believe that this this what we believe to be the the horns of a bull are actually the hind legs of the scarab beetle or the dung beetle and that's the the dung beetle's dung which is why it's always dark and it's a, it's a representation of pregnancy because the dung beetle carries their seed in the center of the ball and I know it's going to sound absolutely wild to a lot of you right now and you're going to be like oh don't be silly <laughs> it, but it's not wild and actually you'll see it's quite consistent and not only is it consistent, it's a far more symbolic to us as Africans that this is a symbol of the female being pregnant or being with child. So when the female was shown, when the queen was shown in the form of Hathor with what we think are the bull's horns, yeah, this is actually the female, a, a depiction of the female being pregnant and this ball being a representation of her carrying the seed and the hind legs of the dung beetle are actually what guide the womb, the external womb around. So it shows her being a protective mother. I know that sounds absolutely crazy to a lot of you right now, but I promise you it's consistent. And that's why you would find that a lot of the time it's not forming a perfect circle. They are perfectly able to form perfect circles in Kemet but actually you'll see that it conforms to the shape of the legs. So it's not, in my opinion, not a depiction of Ra, and that's why it's always shown in that same deshret, kind of like earthy, browny, red tone, um, and not shown, you know, in the yellow or the white or the gold of a sun. So yeah, that's a bit of a deep one, but um, <laughs> Khaled, apologies, I did put you on timeout. Yeah, and someone already noticed that. Okay, so apologies for that, Khaled. Good to have you back glad you i hope you can forgive me <laughs> i did mention that <laughs> okay appreciate you sorry about that please take my wholehearted apologies khalid okay you're very very welcome here i just didn't have time to read through and obviously because you weren't writing in english i didn't know what you were writing <laughs> so i just banned you both but i had a suspicion you could be you could be not the one that was being disruptive so that's why i only put a half an hour on there sorry about that but yeah so that's my kind of like wild conspiracy but actually now that you know it and I've planted the seed in your head and I'll do, be doing a longer video about it soon. Um, yeah, now that you know it, um, I'll be, you'll, I'll point it out to you and then you can decide if you think, it's just a theory obviously, but I'll point it out to you and you see if you think it fits, but there's a lot of reasons why I think it fits, okay? Um this was a, what was this this was I was trying to interpret this cartouche earlier was well, well the cartouche is on this inscription I should say once again three female bodies note the body proportions okay note them very much African body proportions look at the short torsos Look at the arms almost down to the, the elbows, almost down to the waist, okay? Um, yeah, this one I just, I, I, whenever I see these um, long kind of prose of Meduneta, I take an image because I know at some point in the future I'm gonna wanna go back and actually try and run my own translations of these. So that's why I capture them. You can see various depictions of probably recognizable. This is like a pantheon of gods, it looks like here. Because we have Horus or Heru here, Anubis, Osiris, 
we have Her Horus with the or Ra, depending on which interpretation you're taking with the crown of Osiris here. I think that might be a depiction of Amun Ra. I mean, it's a bit of a variation of his crown, not quite the same. This one was interesting. Just that you guys kind of absorb and appreciate these. the crown of Amun Ra there Osiris or someone in the form of Osiris there and the priest pouring something I'm not quite sure Hathor or someone in the form of Hathor there once again you know it's not a perfect circle and you'll see with this one you can kind of see the seed in the middle like I was saying earlier Okay, bust of. Says, I don't know what that is. Who is that a bust of? I'm not sure who this is a bust of. Hmm. This is a piece that I'd never seen before, but it just struck me <laughs> how beautiful it was. Once again, that same representation that I spoke to you guys about earlier. Okay, and that unperfect circle. And by the way, there is kind of like supporting evidence for this. And so it's not something that I just made up. It's something that actually is supported by early interpretations, actually. So, yeah. But yeah, this one definitely captured my attention. You can see the kind of like that layered, twisted African locks kind of hairstyle used here. Really beautiful. Never seen kind of like a winged... I don't know, it's a kind of like a representation of Ma'at, isn't it? If it has the wings. So it looks like a representation of Ma'at. But once again, yeah. There's another one. Really amazing pieces. Okay, and once again, Aset. suckling Heru I think and then and look at I mean look at this one this is the most one of the most imperfect circles you'll see so once again if we're going to go on the perspective that this is a depiction of the sun then we would have to also go on a, the the perspective that they didn't know how to form perfect circles and we know that's not true because they formed perfect circles whenever they had depictions of Aten who was the actual sun god, Aten Ra, or Aten was the actual sun god, and he was always depicted with a perfect circle. Whereas between the horns of Hathor, or at least what I don't think are horns, you always see this kind of squished form. That's from straight on. God, I took a lot of pictures of this, didn't I? <laughs> this one, really, I've never seen this piece before, so I had to capture it as much as possible. Quite a striking piece, this one. Really, really lovely representation of the short twist as well. Really nice representation there. So there, I raised the camera there so you could see that. This is a new one to me. Definitely going in the collection. I hope this one gets shared a lot. Beautiful one. Beautiful image. Now, I'm not sure he's striding with, he would have been striding with the staff here. I'm not sure how significant that is in terms of his seniority, this person. 
um, it says here grand statue 22nd dynasty one second I want to kind of see what the 22nd dynasty is bear with me Sorry, just grabbing a book. Okay, so twenty second dynasty is Libyan dynasty. Yeah. There's a Libyan dynasty there. Okay. Mm -mm. Let's carry on. Now this I had to catch this image because this one's gonna make you throw up in your mouth a little bit. <laughs> Look at this beer. So this is on the ceiling of the ancient Egypt section or one of the sections in ancient Egypt. Look at this absolute garbage piece. Sorry, let me go back again. Oh what what happened to it? Sorry. Look at this absolute garbage. <laughs> now how many things can we get wrong about ancient Egypt in one painting? Now I get this is just probably some kind of artistic expression. It was painted in eighteen twenty seven. But look at the crap. Sorry, just look at this absolute nonsense. First of all, okay, this is a woman with a man's face. <laughs> We're only dressed to the waist, whereas the man is for some reason wearing a very Roman robe. I've never in the history of Kemet seen a ruler depicted in, in, in a robe like this, not let alone two robes, three robes. I'm not gonna even gonna talk about color here. <laughs> that is not a depiction of the Nemes that I've ever seen before, this flat floppy thing that's clearly not filled with hair like it should be and if that's <laughs> if this is the guy on the throne is the pharaoh why are these two people wearing ne Nima's crowns Nima's is supposed to be for the for the ruler okay it's not some floppy thing that every I mean this looks like it was but it says 1827 this looks like it was flipping painted in about 40 years ago it's got so many stupid errors this is just hot, hot mess of garbage. <laughs> There's nothing even remotely Egyptian about this. Not even remotely Egyptian. They're, they're mixing about 17 different <laughs> traits from across Europe and none of them are Egyptian. I ain't never seen it. I mean, just, I, I'm not even gonna go into this. This is just uh, this, but obviously you know why they do this. They do this to <laughs> someone said Pharaoh Marshall Mathers. <laughs> they obviously set the um, <laughs> do this to set your you know to settle the minds and the opinions of people as they're walking through. They really want to influence the way that you're digesting information. You know. This, I mean, it got, I could talk about it, so I'm not going to anymore. You've seen it now. I'm gonna move on, because it just gets a bit frustrating, just even seeing this nonsense. This is another piece that I hadn't seen before that I thought was really beautiful. So I got an image of it. I actually think I included this image in one of my in my latest videos. I don't know if you guys see my latest short regarding the wigs, or the wig that they've kind of like made up, <laughs> and they have on display in the Met Museum. And they've got you. Uh, it's just a ridiculous wig. But if you check check out my shorts, it's my latest short, and I do feature this image very briefly. I just think it's a really lovely, wonderful image. I haven't seen it before. Kind of stood out to me. Look at that, with the crown. Feature wise, yeah, just have a little bit of a. She has a bit of a queen tea going about her facially. Really nice image. Who is this again? So it says Isis Hathor, Thebes. So it says Theban, um, third intermediary period, 1069 to 664. So it could have been any of the inter intermediary period, but it's, I think it's beautiful. Very, very African looking to me. It's 
it's a de depiction of Amun again. This is once again really nice original piece. Never seen it before. Only got one eye and some of the faces sawn off. But once again, you can still see the African the Africanity of the image. Unveiled face. Thank you for the um, donation. I appreciate you. Says this research is invaluable. This is a safe space to see the world as it really is and was. Thank you. I'm glad you feel that this is a safe space. Um, yeah, I think we do some, find some interesting things out here. So it's really nice and I appreciate the $10 more than you, more than you know. So thank you very much. Let's just have a look. Look at this image. I mean, I've never seen this piece before. I wonder why it hasn't been photographed. It's a really, really good one. It needs to do the rounds, doesn't it? So this is Statue of Amon or Amun or Amen. Or Haruja, I don't know. Um, the Bas Epoch. So this is, I think that would be the Persian dynasty, just before the, just before the invasion, or I should say, the um, Ptolemaic rule. That period, I think. I think that's right. And have a look at this one. Another really wonderful piece. I just really love um, when you get really clear depictions of the African hair pieces and the African hairstyles that they had, like this one, really shows it in its kind of like clarity. Okay, beautiful, beautiful piece. No arms, unfortunately. So it's a statue of woman, statue of femme, yeah, statue of woman, bronze. Don't have a date on that, unfortunately. I don't know what that says. <laughs> and this one, I feel like, I, I felt like, maybe someone can help me with this one. I felt like I recognized this face when I saw this face. I was like, I feel like I've, I've worked with this face before. But yeah, what a beautiful piece nonetheless. Really striking. Look at the detail on that. Absolutely stunning. And this isn't that large, by the way. This isn't that large, it's quite small. So when I looked at the way they were apply, able to apply detail at such a fine grade, it's really just, yeah. Someone said it looks a bit, yeah, that could be it. Musicologist has said it looks a bit like Amos Nefertari, and I'm with you. It does look a bit like Amos Nefertari. That might be it. That might be the familiarity that I'm seeing, because, yeah, you've got that kind of, you've got those full cheeks. Yeah, I'm seeing that. I get you. And look at those body proportions once again. So this one is divine, I'm not sure, something of Amon, 22nd dynasty this is, this is the Libyan dynasty again. Gosh, 22nd dynasty seems like it's got some real, real gold during that period. I'm going to have to do a little bit of a deep, deep dive into who those rulers were. Someone said a definitely filed down nose, let's actually have a look at that because that I think I just skipped over that. Yeah, absolutely. You can see there's been reshaping here and that's what's caused the discoloring. Definite attempts at reshaping the nose. And the thing about it is they can reshape the nose, but it doesn't change. This is the beautiful thing about when you actually realize and you can recognize African phenotype. It doesn't matter when they do things like reshaping the nose because you can't change the overall structure of the face. The overall structure of the face is still African and you just you get Africans with really small petite noses. So it just makes it look all they've done is made turn, turned it from one African to another African. <laughs> Essentially, it's, it's still an African. <laughs> so they can do that stuff all they want, you know. 
I had to capture this piece. This is amazing. Like a little little trifecta here. Lovely. So Heru, some kind of Osiris and I mean, I was a little bit, looking at it now actually, I'm a little bit dubious. I don't like, see this over here, you see the way that's curving? This gives me, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say this gives me a little bit of fake vibes, you know? Oh, it does. And I'll tell you why, because they've curved this to make it look like horns and it looks like horns because we currently believe that those are horns upon the head of Hathor. But since coming to the unconfirmed but very strongly supported revelation that those aren't horns, those are the rear legs of a scarab beetle, I've noticed that the shape of them is always consistent and that they're always straight after they, so straight and then it kind of curves around and I'll show you the scarab later so you can do the comparison as well and show how consistently they drew the rear legs of the scarab beetle and it never does this curvy thing here so this curvy thing makes me feel like this is a maybe I don't know I'm getting fakey vibes on this one <laughs> I could be wrong I could be wrong I could be wrong but I'm getting fakey vibes on this one now that's just me personally so it says, um, or it could be a dynasty that came later that didn't understand fully the, I don't know. Once again, 22nd dynasty again. They seem to have quite a lot of representation in this time period. Someone said, but the faces look black. I'm like, well, yeah, they do. But I don't know. Why would they get that detail? Why would that be so different? I don't know. They do, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I could. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It did capture me when I first done it, but it could be just be the, a, a different dynasty, you know. This one, note the restored eyes. Remember what I've spoken to you about that. This has clearly been, the color of this ushabti has clearly been blasted off. Okay, this has been sanded and blasted off, but then the color of the eyebrows and the eyeballs has been restored so i find that a bit weird but yeah there you go either which way interesting shabti there oh it's not on a shabti it's actually a statue but it didn't look that big when i I'm trying to remember when i it's, no this is not on a shabti this is just a statue of a walking ruler clearly wearing the capresh so it needs to be one of the pharaohs Amenhotep or Amenophis the first Grinaldi Afrique I don't know what that means someone said they never miss leg day <laughs> I was very happy to see this one as well this is um, another statuette of Amos Nefertari this is her in her youth clearly um you can kind of tell that from the body and i was really pleased because this now means i think i've got about i think i've got at least five or six of the major depictions of amos nefertari and so when it comes to doing my reconstructions i actually done a, a post quite recently i found a nubian girl that had almost the exact same features as my reconstruction which I found quite interesting but kind of with a slightly different spin but I found it really interesting and they kind of all work together to kind of like unify around the several depictions of Amos Nefertari but it's really nice to just have all of the several depictions of her now from the various museums around the world um yeah it's quite a satisfying feeling so this is a really beautiful depiction once again, look at those limb proportions again. I always will just kind of like point those out. Um, Stephen, thank you very, very much. He said, I build museums globally and was involved with the Grand Museum in Egypt. Tut, tut to all of them. The creator process is unreal and very fabricated to suit who is paying for it. 
it's a special niche well that information is amazing Stephen so thank you for sharing that with us and obviously thank you for the £20 donation it's really appreciated but it's good to hear firsthand about the agenda you know the very questionable curation process I would love to get involved and start taking some of these um, you know people who write these note annotations and plaques to task I'm really beginning to challenge them I think it's necessary and I think the time has come that they get corrected basically so yeah thank you for the donation and if you ever you know <laughs> if we could ever see a way of opening that door to have that discussion I would love to be a part of that appreciate you very much I always like to capture from side view as well just so we can really get the fullness of these artifacts you don't get it from just from straight on always try and get it from a couple of angles so you can really start to capture what that person looks like this one gave me funny vibes <laughs> I'm not gonna lie um, but yeah it was, it was a nice one it just looks like it's been painted and kind of tampered with a little bit but anyway um, I can't remember who this was oh I never took the picture of the plaque it's clearly a pharaoh they're wearing the capresha would have been New Kingdom somewhere or beyond New Kingdom somewhere but I'm not sure This is another artifact that I've never seen before that really just like, wow, I was like, that's an amazing one. I love how clearly it shows that hairstyle that's still, you still see amongst the, well, you see different variations of it. You see it amongst the um, Afar men who kind of show it in its kind of like layered style, quite similar to this. And you also see it amongst the Hamer, Hamer tribe, but the women in the Hamer tribe have a different variation of it. Really lovely. And have a look at this one from the rear, just be able to just see the, the intricate. This one's more of a twisted look at the, the, it's clearly a depiction of twists, quite clearly. And, but then over here you have a depiction of locks. It's really nice to just see the different variations that are on display of African hair, always. African hair which is wonderful no comment so yeah I got a nice face on there really wonderful piece there just a really and this one one of the probably one of the closest and clearest images I've got of these different variations of African hair that you get really nice so this is Nefer Renpet then we have Nacha this is another one I hadn't seen before lovely piece what period are we looking at here I'm not sure what period we're looking at here but this is another piece I've never seen this piece before I mean, I will have to find a way of uploading all these so everyone can see these and we can just like get them circulated as much as possible. Wonderful. Once again, just taking those body proportions again. That typically slender African long limbs. Really nice to see square shoulders love it i mean this is just this almost could be an artifact now <laughs> yeah this artifact could be from anywhere in africa this really nice piece again same hairstyle okay same twisted Look at this beautiful African hairstyle, long, thick African twists around the hair. And a couple embracing one another. Really nice. 
nice. Okay, one second. I'm gonna just pause quickly so we can do a little bit of a thingy. I'm gonna promote some people. Um, and let's do some promotions. Uh, Sir Factant, I'm not, I know you didn't ask for this, but you have been promoted to moderator. <laughs> Charming Aquarius, you also are being promoted to moderator. Feel free to ban who needs to be banned because I don't have time to do it whilst I'm doing the live stream. And... Jonathan, let's get you up there as well. I'm just picking the people who are closest to the bottom and let's get Renaissance women as well. There, so I've added a few moderators now. If I've missed you out, it wasn't personal. I literally just, <laughs> oh, and let's get, let's get Wildflower there as well actually. Yeah, there we go. So there you go. Ban, ban whoever you like, guys. <laughs> I trust you all. <laughs> okay, let me keep it moving. All right. Um, and we can carry on now. Hopefully get rid of all the distractions and move on. Zeovan. Do you want to do you want to be a, a moderator as well? I can add you as well. If you want to be, just let me know. Um, so yeah, I'd I'd prefer to not have the hassle. <laughs> so I appreciate you. Um, all right, let's carry on. Another piece. I can't remember. I, some of these pieces I just captured because they're really beautiful. So sometimes I won't have that much to say about each of them this is Panhesi chief treasurer I want to say chief treasurer of Ramesses the second over here so this is Ramesses chief treasurer looks like a brother to me keep going this one I really liked um, it's kind of a slightly different rep different representation of the hair uh, this this one that you saw the back of earlier okay this one doesn't show any kind of like any attempt to show twist in detail which I thought was quite interesting so this suggests to me that these are just kind of like thick individual locks which is interesting I don't know what these little indentations represent maybe there was some kind of jewel embedding or something I don't know but I found it interesting that's why I kind of captured this one I found it very interesting there he is and he holds what's this staff oh it's a ram so this would have been New Kingdom some point because I know that they started having the ram present um, as of around Ramesses I think it was the sons of Ramesses, K.M. Torre was one of the first to introduce the ram to Kemet. This one holding the, the totem of Heru. So what does it say here? Oh, I can't read that. <laughs> I wish I could. But what do I, I can't, I can't read it, I can't read it. <laughs> Okay, Soul Polestar said, I have a couple of questions. Oh, I've got, I've got to do my thing again. Bear with me one second. Every time I go in and slip out, I've got to change my my live chat thingy stops working. Okay, so let's get you up there. So Soul Polestar said, I have a couple of questions in the chat. Can you talk about it? Thanks. I can, because you're just giving me a $5 donation, which I really appreciate. So let me go back and see what your questions are. 
I noticed the roundness of the face. Can you give examples where you find those facial characteristics? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say all over Africa, roundness of face is, I'd say roundness of face is definitely kind of something that you see quite heavily around all of Africa, but particularly, obviously, upwards from Central Africa. Um, even when people have narrow features, Africans just tend to have rounder faces. Um, they can have long faces, but we have a tendency towards round. And also, just on note as well, roundness of face is often a. It's often a result, kind of like a. It's often like a little bit of an illusion that's created by the projection of the lower portion of the face, particularly in women. So we're gonna come on to it soon. Actually, we're gonna look at another portrait of Yuya that I got and Yuya's got a very very all over round face and the roundness of his face comes from the fact that there is this kind of forward projection from of the entire lower portion of the face that Africans have that gives us an overall really round look um, and you get a lot of that in Kemet basically um, so yeah that was a great question um, I can't, I, I want to say more, but I don't want to be too restrictive in what I say because it is something that is reflected kind of everywhere from Ethiopia to Senegal to South Africa to, ev yeah, even like North Africa, um, you know, amongst the melanated tubu or whatever it is, you will see this roundness of face. So, yeah, it's quite universal. But, um, yeah, great question. Um, let's see, going back to what I was looking at. This one, once again, have a look at the representation. This kind of like squish doesn't look like a perfect sun, does it? Okay. So, you know, there is where, and why is it colored darker as well? You notice it's darkly colored as opposed to trying to be light. Just interesting to note. I can't read that, so I'm going to move on. Beautiful representation here. Wearing the crown of Amun. So I'm guessing this is going to be 18th dynasty. One of the Amuns, Tutankhamun, or someone along those lines. Because they are the ones who like to be depicted in. So something Thebes, Amun, and Mut. So this is Merit Mat, okay, um, statue of something for Mary Mat, Mary Mat. Um, so is that, would that be wife of Ramesses? Nefertari Mary Mat, maybe. So is that Ramesses there? What does it say here? I'm in Ra. I can barely read this. Someone who's reading French tells me I'm reading it all wrong. I'm not sure. Thebe, Thebes, Theban dynasty. That is that would be the eighteenth dynasty. I think was a Theban dynasty, but there were others. But I'm guessing that this is the eighteenth dynasty. I could be wrong. But yeah, either way, a very nice depiction there. Depiction of Ptah there and Ra or at least Horus with the Ra thingy and Amun Ra Amun Ra Ra Her Horror Horakti and Ptah. And here's the scarab that I was talking about earlier. So a lot of people don't know that the scarab is actually the dung beetle. Um, I learned that recently. Um, hence my kind of, um, and obviously learned some other things, hence my kind of like change in perspective about certain things. Didn't realize that the sacred scarab that you see everywhere is actually the dung beetle. And a lot of people don't know that.
and why but there's a obviously a very sensible and significant reason why they venerated the dung beetle um so although we we might see it as something particularly kind of like <laughs> repulsive they didn't they saw it as something quite yeah quite enigmatic and meaningful So I'm just going to skip through some of these images now. If I don't have too much. To say, I'll just skip over them. I'll zoom in here so you can kind of see what's going on here. Looks like this man is being dressed. Looks like they're putting the Usyk, the, sorry, the Usyk on him. Very interesting. I'm not sure who this is. Someone said, look at the bean heads, definitely Nigerians. <laughs> uh, definitely Africans, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Beautiful hairstyle. That has to be Ramesses. Those features are so unmistakable. Oh, I didn't get the plaque. That has to be Ramesses. By the way, let me actually show you a video. So I think, I don't know if you guys saw my short that I did. I did a short quite recently. Well, I'll say recently. It's a few months back now. But I did a short and it was about um it was about um king mutessa the second or the ruler mutessa the second who's a descendant of mutessa the first who happens and he happened to look exactly like ramesses and when i say exactly like exactly like well actually a friend shared with me wesker who's normally here but he's not here today shared with me a video of mutessa the second that i'm going to try and find of you because it's going to freak you out how much this guy looks like Ramesses. And I'm going to find that video. Bear with me. Because this will be worthwhile. Um, yeah, I'm going to find that video now for you guys. I'm just going to play it for you so you can get a, get a feel for how much this guy looks like Ramesses. And then you'll understand... Because I did my reconstruction of Ramesses before I actually saw this guy. But now, when you see this video, I hope you understand why I chose that particular phenotype for Ramesses. There was a reason why I chose that phenotype for Ramesses. Um, I, it always kind of struck me as being kind of like, once again, Great Lakes region. And, and there was a reason why. Um, Let me see if I can find it. He's given like a speech. I wonder if this is it. No. Bear with me, I will be there very, very soon. This might be it. This brother looks exactly like Ramesses. It's unbelievable. In fact, I'll just go show you this video. This one, he's not speaking, but this is good enough. Because you're going to see this video and you're going to see exactly what I mean about this brother. It looks exactly like, exactly like Ramesses. It's unbelievable. Deposed by the British, by the way. So, by the way, sorry, former king of Buganda, okay? Um, and deposed by the British. King Butisa II, Kabaka of Buganda, is in London to fight the government's decision to exile him from the little province that is part of the Uganda Protectorate. 
The King's insistence that Uganda should be an independent state, says Colonial Secretary Oliver Littleton, violates an agreement signed by the Kabaka, who is now the centre of a parliamentary controversy. I wanted you guys to get... I wanted you guys to get a um, side view. You almost didn't get it there, but there's a, there's a, a clip of him speaking and you get a side view on, on this, like, bloody hell. But that is, to me, they, they just look like exactly the same person. But yeah, just want to share that. I will I will find the the other video as well to share with you guys because it's definitely worth watching. Let me keep moving. Is that King Tart again as Amun Ra? This one I hadn't seen before. It's a really interesting piece. I I, I always get shot when I see like images. Yeah, this is Tutankhamun. Um. I always get shocked when I find pieces that I've never seen before like this one. You know, as someone who does, literally does nothing but search for peaches, pieces when I'm doing like reconstructions. I never saw this one before. This is an amazing piece. Really, really amazing piece. Seems to go under the radar for some reason as well. It's weird. Catch it from side view. Always like to get different views, like I said. I mean, I find it bizarre sometimes when I do walk through the museums. When you see if you see too many genuine artifacts back to back, <laughs> this is quite funny. When you see too, too many genuine artifacts back to back, you start leaning towards the, <laughs> like it's very easy, you kind of walk through the museum and they've shown you a few genuine artifacts back to back. And you kind of, if you're, if I was like a neutral, I didn't know anything about this, I'd be kind of like, hey, these people kind of, kind of look like Africans. <laughs> And then what they do when you reach that point of like too many genuine features back to back is they'll just hit you with a big block of fakes <laughs> to skew you back again. And that's literally how they set set up the set the museum up. So you're kind of walking through genuine, genuine, genuine. You're hitting with the genuine ones. Like, oh my gosh, these these people do that. Like, oh no! And then they hit you with like a giant bunch of fakes. And then you're like, okay, no, 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 they weren't. That's kind of how they play with the emotions of people. It's, it's quite funny. So we're kind of like in one of those genuine, genuine roles at the moment before we kind of like <laughs> hit another cluster of fakes to throw, throw us off the scent. But have you noticed how we're getting, we're getting, it's now, how far in are we? And we're just now getting to dynastic Kemet. Okay, only now just getting to dynastic Kemet now. They're very, very careful about the way they kind of temper how much you see. We've seen nothing but intermediary periods up until now, haven't we? And it's only now we're getting in and we're actually seeing the genuine, the hairstyles here, beautiful. I mean, look at this sister over here, man. That is like thick, thick locks. You can't achieve this with any, you, you can only, only achieve this with African hair. There's just no other way of attaining this. There's no other way of attaining this. If there is, I'd like you to show me. There's no other way of attaining this. This is Tamaru and I don't know, Imenemi Pet. This is a really beautiful piece. Look how detailed the hair is. Look how detailed the hair is. You can see. And I really like the fact that they painstakingly like to show you the difference between what hairstyles being employed. Here we're clear that we're using a twisted form here. Typical. Or 
of what's still seen in Africa today. Even the steles, look at this. Look at this stele. I mean, is there any doubt about what they were communicating their hair was like here? Any doubt whatsoever? Literally carved into stone. Have a look at that. And they've shown differentiation there. So look, kind of above the band, you kind of have a straight lock and then it kind of goes in. So it looks like maybe it was at the root at the top, it might have been kind of like sister locks. And then beyond the band, they will probably wound around each other. So twisted around each other. So they probably take two locks or three locks and just create twists out of the kind of base locks. And then they decided to show all that detail. How about that? They're gonna show and share all of that detail in terms of how they achieved that. Beautiful, really, really nice. Again, we can just appreciate the fine detail in the hair same process actually taken here you can see straight locks on the base this one actually stays straight locks all the way this one's interesting i've never seen that kind of zigzaggy style before what does it say here so we're still on eminem hat oh Imin Iminem Minet Iminem Minet Really nice piece here and he's wearing what a lot of people wouldn't realize this is looks like a side view of it's kind of like a, a cat mix of a capresh because the cat doesn't normally have this kind of like long part that normally, what, so it looks like a capresh actually, but it hasn't got the stripes going through it. So I would say this is the capresh headdress. Now the reason I'm pointing that out is because I want you to notice as we spoke about often on this channel, is that bulge to the back. It doesn't just flap down, okay? There's normally hair, African hair that lies underneath it, either filling up the capresh, okay? or something or another. But this is what normally why we have this bulge at the back. It doesn't just kind of like flap or just fall straight down. So it's nice that they captured that detail. You can see it really clearly in the 3D versions as well. Could possibly be a braid out. Someone said it looks like the hair looks like it was braided and taken out. That is a possibility. possibility. It could be a braid out. I'm down with that. Um, what did it say here? Men cow, men cow, men cow, men cow whore. But this is not old, this is New Kingdom, so this is someone called men cow whore, but it's not the same one from the old kingdom. Look at this beautiful image. Both of them. Once again, <laughs> like I said, you just get me hit. You be, the more you kind of walk through, you're getting hit with the with the real vibes. <laughs> you know, anyone want to you know claim any of the artifacts that I've shown in the last ten minutes as being anything but African? You know, feel free to. You are you're very welcome. <laughs> any anything but Africans here? Let me know. <laughs> This is a child we know by the side plait. Okay, so this is a depiction of a child. The Himba children still wear the large plait, but they wear it on the top of their heads as opposed to the side. But it's still an African trait just to have the single braid or plait in the hair. 
This appears to be a young girl. So this, I'm not sure, this might be the depiction of a pygmy, I'm not sure, or young person. I can't remember if I got the um, got the, um, the plaque for this one. Another artifact that I'd never seen before, but struck me again, really beautiful. Wonderful artifacts there. Now this one, I'm trying to remember what that was. So this is face of a royal sphinx, man. I'm trying to get the face of the boy. What that would, what that was. Got a fragment here. Mask of man. That's all it says. Mask of man. It looked like a boy to me, not a man. So that's what that said. This was a mask of a man. But that looks like a young African boy to me. Would like to know more about that, to be honest with you. It just says mask of man. Um, yeah, once again, we see that large headedness once again this could be a depiction of dolichocephaly it could also be a depiction if you look closely if you were to take that literally as a hairline it could be a depiction of very special shaped amasunzu for princesses as i spoke about in my video about the crowns okay where they would use this particular kind of hair shaping very similar to queen rosalie Gaganda. The last queen of Rwanda, she had a hairstyle very similar to this. So if you can kind of squint your eyes, you can kind of see that as well. So you could either see this as being dolichocephaly, which is an African trait, or it could be a very deliberate, short, Afro-shaped hairstyle of Amasunzu. So fragment of servants, it says this is. Temple of Aton, Karnak, so this will be 18th dynasty under the rule of Akhenaten. There's Akhenaten or a bust of him that has been clearly damaged and I think slightly tampered personally. <laughs> but it still has some traits that kind of reminds you of him. This is that very famous one. Yes, this is it, the genuine one that goes around the internet. Meritaten, I believe this is. You can see where the paint was preserved, the colors preserved. They like to ignore that and then try and paint her like she was this color, which is clearly not the original color. You can see the original color here, a very dark and deep reddish brown. Okay, very, very deep brown there see it on her neck so you can tell which kind of complexion she had it would have been the same complexion as all of the people in her family and her siblings at the time which you can find quite easily <laughs> all over the internet um just type in the armana children or something along those lines and you'll see the color that they're always depicted in and then she shares it here it's a really dark and deep brown This is just a nice capturing of that beautiful local body form. This is a very high part that I will put, this is like textbook East African, <laughs> East African body form here. Very, very, this is very, very, and, this, and I'll say straight, this is very, this actual shape is quite unique to East Africa. So that's 
this one caught my attention because like that's actually very East African. Um, and those of you familiar or East African women will know that as well. <laughs> um, it's a particular kind of shape. Okay, the 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 waist to hip ratio is, yeah, just that. <laughs> I've got, and don't get me wrong, I've got obviously, I've got females across obviously family and that, who obviously I know black women in general tend to have more, um, more exaggerated shapes, I would say. I don't want to use any provocated words, <laughs> more exaggerated shapes. Um, but I'd say this one is very East African. These These hips are very large. Um, in comparison to the waist, this is yeah, it's, it's something that I've seen very, very, very common um, throughout most of you, most of you have got. <laughs> Someone said President Kagami's daughters have that shape. I don't doubt it, and I guess they're kind of yeah, they're kind of central, central East, aren't they? That's uh, Rwanda, isn't it? This one I captured because it just kind of like struck me because I was like, is that even, this is like a, the kind of comedic artwork you never see. This looks like really in place. This looks like Dogon art almost or something you'd find in Nock, doesn't it? But this is comedic. So these are the pieces of artwork they don't show you, the ones that just look like other African pieces of artwork, okay? You wouldn't find anything like this anywhere kind of, you know, just kind of like in the general Mediterranean. This is this is specifically African artwork. There's something about the the iconography, the totemism, everything about it just is very, very familiar with stuff that you'd see. Yeah, like I said, this does remind me quite a lot of some of the artwork you'll see kind of like in the in the Dogon area. Kelnari, thank you very much for your donation. said i'm at work so i gotta check out i'll definitely be re-watching at the weekend as always excellent glad you enjoyed it it's been a bit i feel like it's a bit, been a bit slow moving but we're still over 300 350 watching currently so <laughs> hey we're doing all right we're doing all right clearly people are okay which is good to hear but i had to yeah capture this from a couple angles because this one like yeah this one really struck me because i haven't seen this kind of comedic art well not a lot of it anyway I mean, what person looks at this face and doesn't see an African woman, honestly? I don't know. I don't know. I find it impossible that anyone could look at that and see anything but an African woman. It's really weird. What is that? What is that we were looking at anyway? So it says, oh yeah, so this is Akhenaten. It says something, princess. Ah, oh, so this is one of Akhenaten's daughters. I think it says one of the princesses of Akhenaten so his daughters are all got very hyper hyper African features <laughs> and this one you're familiar with this is a portrait of Akhenaten and Nefertiti one of the kind of like lesser known ones I don't know if anyone would try and argue that this guy isn't a brother I mean come on looks like one of my uncles I swear in this image This is definitely an image of, I think, just, oh, I would see, I would say, I was going to say Akhenaten, but then I looked at the crown. He normally wears compression. Nefertiti normally wears the flat crown. So I'd say maybe that has to be Nefertiti. But, uh, I don't know. Now, here's, ah, oh, this one's really interesting. Now this one's really interesting, yeah, because they show you this one and they show you what it's supposed to look like completed and they only have, excuse me, oh, that was a big yawn, oh, it's getting late, it's nearly midnight. Um, they only had um, these fragments. Now the reason this one caught my attention is actually because when I went to the Berlin Museum, they had a semi-completed version of this image, okay, which... I 
never got to show you guys but I believed was a fake and there was a reason why I believed the one in Berlin was a fake and this image here makes me want to pull it up and just show it to you guys so I'm going to do just that right now so just bear with me I'm going to show you the Berlin Museum one and then I'm going to ask you guys why I think basically the Berlin Museum one wasn't finished and I think it was a fake they started and then they abandoned and I'm going to show it to you guys and I'm going to let you guys tell me why I was suspicious that this was a fake just bear with me I'm going to get on screen should be near here here it is so I think this was an abandoned fake check this out okay so this is the one I saw in the Berlin Museum and I believed it to be an abandoned fake and I want you guys to tell me why I believe this to be well, let me say let me just quickly shrink this one well, let me shrink it yeah that's it so I'm just shrinking this is the well this is the one that we got fragments of in the Louvre Museum okay and this is the one in Berlin that they started and never finished and I saw it and I thought it was a fake and I want you to tell me why I think that this one which was started and then abandoned why I thought this one was a fake someone said turn up the volume is it loud? no it looks loud enough to me anybody tell me why I was suspicious about this one and seeing this one was actually quite I don't know it was quite cathartic because it made me think even more that this one's definitely something dodgy about this one which is why they never finished it I want to see if anyone gets why I thought this was a fake someone said but no I think the the facial projections aren't bad I could be wrong by the way this is just a theory the crown hit flicks what is it about the crown yeah and so and theme team UK also got onto it as well yeah this is why I thought this was a fake actually so this is this is why I saw this and I was like that's odd because you've got the woman pouring the glass just like they've depicted here the woman pouring into the so the woman serving the drink to her king clearly yeah but the woman is wearing a capresh okay and <laughs> Nefertiti never wore the capresh or at least if she did she wore it after Akhenaten passed away and she would have taken the crown as Nefer Neferuaten but if this indeed was a depiction of Nefertiti serving her husband Akhenaten who is depicted as larger than her so we know this isn't her serving her son and he's Pharaoh why is she wearing the capresh so it didn't make any sense to me and I think that's why they started this fake and then they abandoned it and then they just kind of kept it and hoped that no one would notice but there's clearly an error made here because this <laughs> we don't see any depictions of Nefertiti wearing the capresh with Akhenaten present for that reason so it just feels like they started this they were going to create a fake stele out of it and then they abandoned it when they realised they made the error but they kept it anyway that was my thought and you can see here they've corrected the error this is essentially the same scene but in this scene they've corrected the error in this scene they have Akhenaten correctly wearing the capresh and Nefertiti wearing that flat crown that she's known for so that was my thoughts on that I never got to show you guys that so I'm glad I got to show you it today let's go on this one I haven't got the full stele of but I'm seeing lots of children here 
that's very typical of um, Akhenaten and Nefertiti. They normally have images of them with all of their kids jumping all over their laps. Thuya, how happy was I to see this considering I remember I'd done her reconstruction literally, literally like a, about three, maybe four weeks ago, I posted her reconstruction. So it was actually so nice to see this statue in person really really beautiful statue actually seeing it in person maybe because i was able to get this really super high res image i mean look at that samsung s24 ultra <laughs> banging photos i'll tell you but um yeah i was really happy and it made me want to change a few things about the reconstruction that i've done i've got to make that face a bit rounder seeing this in person i'm telling you and i found another I'll tell you what, something that was really amazing as well. I found another um, statue or portrait of Tuya and Yuya and her husband Yuya. So I'm going to be doing the couple soon as well. Um, I might just play my um, short for everyone here actually really quickly. So you can see the reconstruction I've done since it's on the screen. I think most people here would have watched it already, but I'll quickly pop it on where are we do, 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 do. here it is So let's get that on really quickly. If you haven't seen it already, might as well give you a quick play of my reconstruction. This is Lady Thuya, wife of Yuya, mother of Queen Taiye, and grandmother of King Aten. There you go. So that's the reconstruction there. Actually, we could just do a quick side by side comparison. Um, let me narrow the screen. Yeah, it will. There you go. So there it is. Little side by side comparison. Like I said, seeing it in real life now and getting it like super, super um, close up like this and being able to draw this deal, which I hadn't seen it in this much deal before. I can make that face even rounder, I feel. And I also seeing the set, when you guys and see, whoops. Ooh, These I'm are literal pictures. Stop. Sorry, there you go. <laughs> and now that I've actually um, seen the second portrait of her, I feel like I've got, I'm more informed about her look. Um, but yeah, let me let it play. This is Lady Thuya, wife of Yuya, mother of Queen Taiye and grandmother of King Aten. She is believed to be a direct descendant of Queen Ahmosa Nefertari. She held numerous cons considerable roles in the governance of Kemet during the 18th dynasty. This reconstruction consolidates the known depictions from her statuette and gilded mask, both likely carved during her youth. Watch until the end to see her brought to life. That beat goes hard as well. <laughs> Yeah, so there you go. There's the reconstruction of Tuya. Um, definitely going to um, be updating that slightly um, just to get more of this facial roundness in. But yeah, she's the mother of Taya, by the way, if you don't know. Um, so yeah. Managed to get it from all angles, really high res. So I was over the moon with that as well. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. And this one here, what well, another really beautiful piece that I've seen online but it was lovely to see in person I am the worst person to go to a museum with by the way because <laughs> you won't get anywhere with me that's why I literally have to go alone because yeah people will just get bored of how many images I take so just to get the 
um, thingies here. So this was T, um, Tuya, sorry, that we looked at earlier. Um, says something do harem. I know she was the, what was the word they call lady of the harem. And when she was lady of the harem, her daughter, Taya was called the mistress of the harem, not because she was a part of the harem, but because she was the, her mother was the lady. So therefore she was the mistress of the harem. Um, so we've got a pic, there's a statue. I haven't got in this collection, but there's a statue of Tia when she was young as the mistress of the harem whilst her mother, um, Tuya was lady of the harem. Um, servant Nu. That's who this woman is, Nue, the one we saw. And then it says here, Jeune Phil, I don't know, I can't read that, sorry. <laughs> don't read French. Another beautiful statue. Look at the hair, so nice. Once again, really, really beautiful statuette here. Just nice to see these really unique pictures. And even this one, obviously, we always take for granted the fact that these are greatly faded. You can see the deep brown that was used. Deep, deep brown that was used that a lot of it has come scraping off. But you can see what was actually the intended color when this statue was made. Lady Nay, that is, apparently. Another new piece that I'd never come across before. Really beautiful. Once again, hairstyle really clear to see. Very consistent, actually, this hairstyle. Particularly today, I've seen so many different representations of this same hairstyle today. It's been quite cool. And this one, I think this is Amenhotep III. If I remember correctly. In fact, I think, yeah, this is definitely Amenhotep. I think this whole cabinet is Amenhotep the third and it's really nice because a lot of these pieces I referenced when I did my reconstru reconstruction of Amenhotep the third if you've seen it or not seen it before um so it was nice to see them all together now there are like one or two in there that don't fit so obviously these ones all fit together all look like the same person and then you've got this one over here which doesn't quite fit so I don't know if they've found someone from the Ptolemaic dynasty and wrongly attributed him to be in Amenhotep the third, but I have to ignore the ones that don't fit what is otherwise a very consistent representation of Amenhotep the third, which is what you normally get. So this kind of cabinet is for him. It's called they call him Amenophis, obviously it was the same. And then these wonderful kind of fragmented depictions that have been some of you have probably seen the reconstruction when they've actually put it all together but they all show him with a very consistent phenotype. So even the sideways portraits of Amenhotep III look exactly the same. Look at him there, that's uh, <laughs> so nice. And then I had to go sideways to get this one. Okay, well, this one's a, a, one of my favorite artworks in Kemet. Really, really beautiful sideways art, artwork. And then this, guess who this is at this image? This was the one, I think, of all the ones that I saw when I came in, this was the one that I was happiest to see because I was so, I was very, I was not expecting to see this or find this. Does anyone know who this couple is? I'm going to leave it on the screen, see if anyone guesses. Anyone can guess who this couple is because I was so so over the moon like I was over the moon to find this couple because I didn't think they had any more depictions of them and as soon as I saw them I actually kind of recognised them I was like oh that's that looks like and then I read the plaque and I was like yes it is them anyone 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 get it Amenhotep the third and two and Tia or Tia very close very close one generation up and you're there <laughs> hit flicks you're on the ball by the way someone else said Taya and um, Amenhotep the third very close
one generation up and you'll get it. Who who's has anyone got it yet? I'll give you the answer in three, two. Ah, uh, there you go. Someone got it. LP boxing. Tuya and Uya. Yes, this is a depiction of Tuya and Uya. So I was like, yes, because I didn't that before this there was only one depiction of Yuya that I could find I'll share that with you now actually there was only one depiction of Yuya that I could find and I found it really annoying because it was a good depiction but it didn't give me the kind of detail I needed to do a reconstruction so before then the only other depiction of you of Yuya I could find was this one which is good, but this is a really small piece. And if you if you want to do a serious reconstruction, even though this is great, but if you want to do a really serious reconstruction, this would be harder. Now this one, the features are, as someone noted out, faded out, but that alongside this depiction that I just showed you, and you can start to build a picture of what this guy's face looked like, because there's, really nice consistency between the two in terms of the face shape of the face that kind of like lower portion of the face that no like every that like between the two you can start to build a portion of what is face so actually i'm going to give you guys a bit of a sneak peek into a reconstruction that i'm working on at the moment bear in mind this isn't finished yet but i'll share it it's not quite there yet i'll show you the reconstruction that i'm working with at the moment that kind of consolidates these features I mean it's here we go so this is this is what I'm working with at the moment so it's not quite there yet but it gets that kind of like beaky nature to the lower portion of his face Cons so far wise proportion wise in terms of the features it's pretty much in line haven't quite got the hair right but um I was really uh yeah so I I've got something to work with now anyway put it that way so I'll be posting this soon when it's finished. This is like version 0.0.5. So yeah, <laughs> give me some time to get there. But um, yeah, that's that's where I'm at at the moment. But I was really happy. I've I've only I was only able to do this because of this new statue of Yuya that I never had before. And and obviously we have uh, Tuya here looking exactly like she did in the other statue, but just slightly more detailed and actually what's even more striking let me just quickly do this let me zoom out i just want to quickly show you the close-up of yuya by herself sorry to you by herself and i want to compare that with my reconstruction that i've done so bear in mind i had I'd done my reconstruction before i saw this statue but i want to pull it up alongside just as a bit of a comparison hopefully seeing that anyone you guys will agree that there's an, a decent level of consistency um where's her here we go just looking for a folder there So bear with me one second. I'm just gonna pull it on the screen now. So this is the reconstruction, okay. And bear in mind, this was done before I'd ever seen this statue. And hopefully you can see that, even though it needs a little bit of work, a little bit, this is, they are, I would say, really consistent with one another feature wise and that should be a massive cosine like I always say anyone who tries to feed you that crap about ancient comedic artwork not being you know not being consistent and not you know just being guesswork I think we can now kind of like begin to start saying no that's not true because we do reconstructions and how many times does this happen guys we do a reconstruction and then we see or find artworks afterwards and the artworks look like the reconstruction okay that's the that's the thing so yeah take a bit of confidence there 
All right. It's now 10 past 12. And as much as I really, really, really <laughs> have enjoyed this live stream, we're going to have to part two it just like we did with the <laughs> Neuer's Museum thing. So we're going to call this part one. There's still quite a lot more to show you guys. I'm about, I'm going to say I'm about, yeah. <laughs> nowhere near halfway <laughs> unfortunately yeah i'm about yeah about now i'm about halfway through the images so a part two should be enough to get this done but it's been absolute pleasure i'm just going to quickly scroll up and make sure that i didn't miss any more donations no, I think I got those all so thank you thank you guys for joining in and tuning in please do hit up the likes this has been really enjoyable as always been pretty laid back i appreciate the fact that you guys appreciated the level of disorganization i haven't really organized it we i think we just literally just kind of have been rolling through from image to image but i think there's just been so much to take away um and hopefully giving you guys a bit of motivation to get up and visit a museum if you've got one local because they are always gems there by the way part two will be really interesting so if you can make it please do we'll we'll be touching on um some more comedic artwork and there's a few more kind of like european bits as well and yeah it it it, it continues to be interesting so <laughs> thank you thank you very much guys really 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 appreciate yeah really really appreciate you guys joining me on this and thank you guys and my new team of moderators <laughs> for kicking ass it's nice to have um you guys supporting the channel um i feel like um if i didn't make you a moderator and you feel like you should be one <laughs> just hit me up with a message because i don't want to upset anyone um if i know you well enough i will will not doubt in doing that um but it is a job so you know you might not want to do it <laughs> but yeah i appreciate everyone hit up the likes have a fantastic evening i'm gonna to go to bed now um because it's 10 past 12 over here in the uk and those of you who were uh, yeah who have stayed up late to listen and to be a part of the stream i appreciate you everybody have a good evening and i'll see you again soon bye bye all.